also participate in the night by coming up to the Queen's Domain Club Rooms. Yes, right on top of the Queen's Domain in the heritage-listed Coast Wireless Station. You never know, we might get you in front of the camera or behind doing one of the many roles during the night. We get underway with our program on a Wednesday night from 7.30pm local time. We'll see you soon. This is VK7 OTC. So here we are in the shack to have a close look at the IC705. It's a shack in a box. Okay, we'll stop that. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, VK7 OTC, the club station of the Radio and Electronics Association of Southern Tasmania with our uh, DATV experimenters night. And uh, apologies for the uh, slightly late start. Uh, we, uh, we have been doing, uh, uh, for those who are in the club, they'll know uh, we've been doing club rooms renovations, and so uh, our uh, DATV studio was used for a uh, a, um, <laughs> a storage uh, area. So we've just uh, only just got things back into uh, back into uh, the way that we uh, we want them to be. Uh, we also have a um, a new uh, a new focus and zoom camera uh, in the ATV studio for our uh, our second um, second presenter. So we'll be using that in the not too distant future. So just a reminder, um, people can call in on um, R2 on 146 700. They can also uh, call in on the YouTube uh, chat channel. Um, so uh, there are a couple of uh, um, couple of options available to you. Unfortunately, tonight we don't have DMR. I um, I totally forgot to. Uh, to bring the uh, hotspot and the the uh, DMR radio, so I apologise for that. But uh, that that will certainly have that next uh, next week. So what we've got tonight is um, a little bit of uh, an update, obviously on the renovations. Our uh, Wednesday afternoon group uh, appeared at about noon today, and there were there was much amazement and uh, um, and great comments about the club rooms um, and the renovation that we uh, we've been doing. So uh, the next time you come up, uh, you'll see that the main room is actually um, all all has been painted. Uh, the repair, uh, the repairs to the ceiling have all been done, um, and uh, the access points up. Uh, the short throw projector, uh, the 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 uh, whiteboard type projectors been mounted, uh, and that's all going up. The television's back up there. So um, so anyway, it's coming together. Uh, and looks all very, all very fresh and uh, renewed. <laughs> so, uh, so the next, uh, the next job we've got to do is um, out in the, uh, the the operating room and also in the ATV studio. We'll be doing the same thing. So, uh, so in the not too distant future. So, and and Richard uh, and Steve are out there uh, next door. Um, they've put a uh, a very nice new uh, rack. No, no, that's all right. Um, I'm just uh, commenting about uh, the work that's going on. <laughs> And um, there's a very nice professional rack up above head height uh, that's going into uh, for the router and the IRLP node and a few other things. So uh, things are certainly happening. Things are certainly happening. So what we've got tonight is a little bit of a focus on a couple of the contests that have been happening uh, just recently uh, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and what I might do is I'll get uh, I'll get Richard in in a sec uh, around that. The first contest that we're going to uh, be talking about is the VHF UHF Winter Field Day, um, and uh, that uh, occurred a couple of weeks ago. And the um, provisional results have been sent out, and we'll just take you through those provisional results um, because they they supply a fantastic service uh, around uh, the analysis of your log, uh, and uh, it always. Um, uh, it's always good to have a look at the analysis of your log to find out how you can improve for the next uh, the next contest, as well as uh, we'll have a look at the provisional results. The other uh, the other contest that we're going to have a bit of a look at and a, a bit of a, a review of how uh, how we uh, how we all went was uh, is the um, the Trans Tasman Low Band contest. 
And that contest uh, occurred last week, uh, last weekend, uh, from 6 until 12, local time uh, on uh, 160, 80 and 40 metres. Um, I have to say the uh, the noise levels on those bands are always a challenge, so uh, so I think that's probably going to get a bit of a, a bit of a comment. But uh, there were some big scores um, for that for that six hours operating, and uh, it, the uh, the contest is interesting because it, it you you can rework uh, every two hours, um, but that's because the contest is split into three blocks of two hours. So as soon as you go into a new block, you can actually work um, uh, work somebody again. So if you haven't worked them, uh, and it happens to be that block changeover, you can basically work them and then work them again uh, in the block changeover. So uh, that 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 comes in quite handy. So uh, so that's uh, that's actually quite a nice little feature there. Uh, what we've also got is uh, a couple of. Um, uh, magazine reviews. Uh, there are magazines that have come out just recently, which is uh, Low Key Magazine, which also features the uh, uh, the VK3 YE slash NTARC uh, 80 meter transmitter. So we'll have a look at that, and we'll also have a look at the uh, uh, the latest Jubus magazine, which we featured last week, uh, and have a look at the other articles that are in here. We we had a look at the uh, the David Minchin 122 gig. Uh, transceiver last week so we'll have a look at what else is in there um, as well as some interesting tip shop finds so uh, so anyway we'll um we'll get uh, we'll get Richard into the studio so uh, if Richard's out in the uh, the the um, the club rooms can uh, mr. Richard VK7 ZBX make his way into the uh, DATV studio please oh just have a uh, have a bit of a uh, uh, hydration so um uh, and oh and uh, we've got Ken uh, thanks Ken VK seven DY watching uh, on the uh, YouTube uh, stream uh, and the chat channel and I encourage if you're watching on the stream let us know you're actually watching on the stream uh, call in and uh, give us a, a bit of a comment or a, a question or uh, something along those lines and uh, we'll see uh, we'll see whether we can answer the question so uh, so yeah so while uh, while Richard's making his way in. Uh, our new camera, um, which uh, what I can do is just head to our other camera, uh, slightly, uh, it's a bit, uh, slightly high, but uh, this particular camera now we can, um, we can zoom, uh, zoom in on this camera, we can even refocus it, we can do all sorts of things. Unfortunately we can't move this camera, but uh, we'll, we'll have a bit of a fixed uh, arrangement with uh, with the uh, with the uh, mount and pointed at the other person, so we might do that uh, in the uh, uh, when uh, when we have a, another person sitting here. Now, what um, what we've actually done with the um, uh, with the uh, come in, Richard. Yes, yes, yes. Come in, come in. Um, what we've actually done uh, that that uh, camera that we uh, just uh, zoomed in on. Um, zoomed in and zoomed out on. Um, I'll just uh, give you. There was some interesting. Um, interest. Welcome, Richard. Welcome. 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 <laughs> so I'll uh, I'll zoom that way so people can actually see Richard and myself. Um, so we. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's accentuated by the uh, by the camera. Um, so. Um, the, the there's a little box here that I, I made up to do the um, control for the zoom and the focus on that particular camera. Um, now, when I put it together, um, I, I've got a standard little arrangement that I actually use on the Azel uh, dish okay. um, to do it manually on the dish, and I came up with a little arrangement that had uh, relays that did the um, the obviously the polarity changeover for the motor and all that sort of stuff. And it just has an up and down and a left and right um, button. And I thought, actually, I can use that exactly same uh, principle for this particular um, zoom because just use two relays to do each one. Yeah. Correct. Then I put the relays in, and I merrily and I thought, oh, I better I better look up on the, you know Google about what the pinouts on the relays are and all of this sort of stuff because I know it was a twelve volt relay, which is what I was looking for. Then I found out they were actually latching relays. <laughs> And they were two coil latching relays, so it's it's you latch one way and then you latch the other way. 
So there was um, uh, uh, that's okay. That's so okay. Can I buy some more? That's no, 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 no. I thought no, I can work this out. I can work this out. So I, I actually put um, another diode in. Here. <laughs> so so what what happens is um, the voltage comes in. There is the the two push buttons to give me up and down or left and right or focus um, in and out or zoom in and out or whatever else, and. It, that supplies the 12 volts to latch one <laughs> and you'll notice that the relay here so it'll supply it into here and then um, that re that diode will be forward biased so it'll flow through here uh, provide 12 volts to here which is this is in the latch one position <laughs> with it with it up so it provides 12 volts to there and of course these two are both grounded so it provides ground to that side of the motor and 12 volts to that side of the motor, fantastic. So you release that one and then you push this one. So what happens is when you push this one, that supplies the 12 volt to latch two. So it brings that both those two contacts down, but it also then flows the current through here and this diode here reverse is reverse bias. bias. So it blocks it. Blocks it. And so what then you get, 12 volts into, into here and into here, and of course it's latch two, which is down here, which reverses the polarity on the motor. So, so that's what's in that little, this little, sorry, this little box here. Let me just, Excellent. just go. Oh, that's probably because we need to do that. This little box here. <laughs> You'll notice there are two buttons on it uh, for zoom and and um, uh, and uh, focus. There's uh, 12 volts that comes in there, uh, and there's a little LED that I put in there to make sure that I know that there's actually voltage on there, and then there's a little terminal block at the end. So, <laughs> so um, that's uh, that's how we we do that. Now I just wanted now that we've got another person in the uh, in the actual uh, studio, mm. what I will do is just swap over to. Okay, which one's that? That's. Uh, yeah, it's a bit high, isn't it? It's a bit high. <laughs> so <laughs> we just need to um, just need to get that a bit further down. Can you just zoom around to <laughs> and just uh, manually um, manually uh, move that down? So uh, that 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 uh, no no, you need to be a fairly fairly forceful. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's excellent. That's excellent. Okay. And I, I, I still have to do a little bit of white balance arrangement here, but that's not, that's actually not too bad from a white balance point of view. So, okay, that's all right, we'll leave it there. So welcome Richard. Thank you very much. Now the, the, this is VK7ZBX, the uh, the one and only. Responsible for the noise. <laughs> oh no, the noise, yes, yes, and been drilling and punching down <laughs> down Camp 5 and all sorts of, and mounting um, mounting uh, projectors, projectors and indeed. all sorts of things going on. So uh, thank you very much for that. That's um, good. Uh, it's it's, it's looking lovely on the nice painted very floor. It's looking pretty cool. It's very um, looking very, very flash. Very flash, <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're going to have to up our, um, up our fees, you know. <laughs> So I um, thought we'd start off with uh, the VHF UHF field day um, because those who participated in the field day uh, about a week ago received the provisional results yeah. and uh, congratulations. Mine went into the junk file so <laughs> Hayden texted me and went, oh nice work, I went nice out work. Yeah, really? <laughs> So the nice work is because Richard actually took out first place, these are, these are the provisional results, uh, but it took out at first place by a long way. Mm. <laughs> um, the first place in the portable single operator uh, eight hour um, section. Surprises no one more than me. <laughs> Fantastic. And, and by like 2,000 odd points. Um, so the next one was uh, Lester Hibber, which uh, is VK4ALH. Uh, oh, and then there's a familiar one for now on third. So there's seven TW is third, uh, which again I agree surprises me no end because <laughs> I put very little effort into this. But anyway, okay, enough effort I to do that. I certainly didn't do eight hours because by the time five hours had gone, it was way too cold up on Mount Wellington. <laughs> you couldn't put your fingers. <laughs> as soon as I go about, as soon as I go about scoring, I'm hundred. That's it. I'm, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I'm done. 
So, so Richard ended up with ten thousand seven hundred and twenty-seven points. So that's pretty pretty cool. The next one, uh, number two, was eight thousand and ninety-two, and then I was seven thousand three hundred and seventy-eight. So, um, so that was pretty good. And I've just highlighted here um, the number of VK sevens mm. actually uh, who put in uh, participated and put in logs. Put in logs was pretty impressive. And, As, and if from you read the, the specs too, there was a lot of people who didn't put in logs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which are uh, very disappointing. Um, so, um, just the other the other sections, um, the home station eight hours. Uh, we've got Hayden there came in at fourth. So, oh no, is that second? What's do do those two? Yeah. I don't know what they are, but maybe he came second. No, maybe he did come second. And 4,934. And Chris Belmont, I know Chris, um, with 10,291. So outrageous! Oh, and we've got Tim VK VK five uh, Zulu Tango. So hello, Tim. Hello, hello. Uh, actually, are you uh, are you in the, you in this log, uh, Tim? <laughs> I've never seen this course. Oh no, he'll be portable. He'll be portable. Well, truly. Probably the one that worked on uh, seventy gigs and hundred gigs and all that stuff. Five ZT, ZT, five ZT. You can you you can tell us, Tim. Are you, do, were you in the VHF UHF field day? Just uh, give us a comment on the chat channel. Yeah, how's it do? No. no, that's anyway. We'll find out. Um, uh, and the interesting, th there's a little uh, little section at the end here, which is new participants in any any with brackets winter field day <laughs> submitted logs from 2014. I have to admit, this is my first winter. Mm. This is my my first winter one. Um, Murray's first winter one. Yep. So um, so a, a pretty. Uh, QP, DW, HSE, KDV, QP, VH, Whiskey November, Murray ZMS, and ZPD. That's pretty good. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, and the longest distance, uh, longest distances? I don't think we got into that, but these guys. Ah, <laughs> no, Tim wasn't in it. No weather was horrible here, uh, here, here that weekend. Ah, I'm usually the only rover. Oh, very good, Tim. Okay. Well, we had, um, we had Murray as a bit of a rover. Yeah, Murray is a bit of a rover. I'll so, uh, some photos of it, probably. Oh, okay, okay. Probably found from the um, photos. Photos from the said field day. Cool. So, um, so what uh, each of the participants actually also gets as part of the not just the provisional log is the um, check sheet. Um, and this is a fantastic. Um, this is a fantastic resource. Measure of your accuracy. Correct. <laughs> and in fact, you learn a lot from this. And we learnt a lot from the summer VHF UHF field we day. Did. <laughs> um, we did. We did. We did. We, we learnt an awful lot from the the uh, around the accuracy of uh, things like um, grid squares and uh, call correct signs numbers, and correct, correct, receive numbers. Correct and numbers. And numbers. So I was very, very pleased <laughs> to receive this and um, find, and I've highlighted it here, 64 claimed QSOs for reference, 64 counted QSOs. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't see my, I lost some <sighs> points. The con there was some confusion with the contact with um, Alan, BK7 IN in Launceston, who I was pretty happy to work him on okay. six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we got my some of us got confused and the numbers were out by one, so uh, they didn't okay. really. Uh, I think the, the score show. Space in here? Or? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you can you can take a take a camera. To just to pull that off the. Uh, yeah. Oh, don't worry, that camera's not live. The other one, we're on the new one. Okay. The new one. Um, so yeah, I lost a few points because of that, those two contacts, which was a bit sad. But they were the only two, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Th there is a there is a comment here because what 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 the check log does is they go through and give you a summary, then the results by the band by band, um, then it's the 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 interesting areas that they check, and it's things like. Not in the log, so the QSO is remo removed, so it's not in somebody's log, one or the other. Uh, duplicate contacts, uh, call incorrectly copied, exchange copied incorrectly, exchange possibly sent incorrectly, mm. logged <laughs> on an incorrect band, uh, cross band contact using lower score band in both logs. So how is that? 
So I'm not quite sure how that works, but I I made a contact with Murray, um, and on on. Uh, yeah. 144 versus 1.2, yeah. and it obviously took the 1.2, not because, the 144. Yeah, because you were the lower. Yeah. Yeah. So I got zero points. So it was counted, mm -hmm. but I got zero points. Yeah. So um, so that was the only that was the yeah. So it was issue. using the lower. So it, you got the points for the 144 meg contact instead of for 1.2. Yeah. yeah. Well and truly. So. Um, unique calls, station copying your band call exchange locator incorrectly, information. I got two here, which was v, uh, VH, so Vince, yeah, Vince. 432, uh, not in. So, yeah, not sure. Uh, and then uh, I, this is the, the reverse of the my contact with Murray. Oh, of course, yeah. So your log, my log said 144, and I ended up with it. Not, uh, not getting any points from that anyway, and it would have only been a one corner. I had anyway, a couple so. of the uh, um, not in other logs because I rang KRJ and said, "Hey, I want to make a contact." So he's come up, and then his phone rang. So he, like he made like two contacts. Right, which was <laughs> fairly fortuitous. Yeah. Okay. So so re really really handy. Th this is all supplied by um, the the guy that does the VKCL. Correct. Mm. Writes the VKCL, uh, Mike. Um, and uh, does uh, this is a fantastic service? So mm -hmm. you learn an awful lot from this. It's um, a good incentive to actually use VKCL. Uh, well and truly, Oops. well and truly. So, uh, so, so that was the um, the VHF UHF uh, Winter Field Day. So uh, again, congratulations. If you want. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So yeah. if we go to, let me just push the right button here. Uh, and go to there um, and zoom in. So what are we looking at? Okay, so in the foreground is the generator, which oh, right. uh, yes. didn't blow the sun plug out this time. It's priority if we don't have to spend hours cleaning it all up and Ouch. get Rex to come rescue us. <laughs> um, so there's the ladder there which uh, sort of supports the, the portable mast when it's lying down to put the antennas on. Oh, yes, yes. Um, so there's a 2 metre LFR Yagi, about 11 elements at the bottom. Sorry, 70 centimetre, um, 13 element um, D or 6WU sort of design. Um, I can, yeah. I can, oops, look at that. Um, yes, yeah, so that's a D or 6 on the bottom. Um, an LFA antenna there for two metres. Uh, the one on top is the little short one of actually of Hayden's, the little 1.5 metre. Okay. 1296. 12 12 uh, yeah. And then a six metre um, 5 vertical at the back. Okay. And so, um, how did you go with the six metre vertical? Looked Look. really well. Surprisingly well. Okay. Um, because last time I operated portable up there, I had a six metre beam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was always pointing the wrong way. Okay. <laughs> it was only four elements and yeah, it needs a little bit of TLC because. Yes, yeah. okay. 1.6 aluminium, once you've taken the screws out and put them back in twice, then yeah, the it's, saw is not yeah. good. So. Okay. But uh, nuts okay. will fix that. Uh, correct. Um, correct. But look, the, I was really impressed with um, with how that went. Uh, if you scroll off to one side, that's ah. the operating position. So, because it's a... It's a very handy ex fan, isn't it? Yeah, oh. so the little sort of carpeted bit there, like a little drop down flat was a nice sort of bit for the laptop. and. Yep. Okay. And sort of notepad and stuff, and then the two radios. I had the 9100 and the 9700 oh, in the because they're shelf. both dual band. Yeah. So I just sort of split them up and had two microphones, and it worked. I didn't bother to use cat control because okay. Um, I just had to click the on things. But um, you see the tripod off to the side, which is the tripod for the 10 gig yeah. Yeah, system, yeah. and the 2.4 and 3.4 is yep. in there as well. But as you can probably tell, it was a bit moist. Yeah. Well, you were somewhere in Mount Wellington, is that right? Yeah, just just down from the top. There's a little area off to the side. An alcove. Yep. Yeah, sort of. Like the first one as you head down from the top? or Probably is the first one from mm. the top, yeah. Because I think there's two or so before you get to that corner. Yeah, so that's um, that's where Hayden and I actually did uh, yeah. the, the summer. Which um, Hayden's got a great video <laughs> of, uh, of that, so uh, really good. Yeah. Um, mm. I know what's not going out. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. We don't have a uh, VK7 OTC. 
ITC uh, oh, logo. Watermark. Um, which, uh, <coughs> yeah, this is VK7 ITC. I'll just do a uh, ID. <laughs> Every 10 minutes. <laughs> Every 10 minutes. Um, no, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll head back to, back to uh, here. Cool. So it was um, the weather forecast. The weather report from up there was it was cold. Um, cold. So that's actually a picture of. Oh, that's with it laid down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was the way of doing it. That just sort of pivots here. You just drop the extra bolt in. So. Yeah. I actually need something like your your step ladder to when I do mine because I actually sit mine with the elements on the ground. Yes. Yeah, 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 I'm always yeah, a bit. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. I only do that once or twice. Now. Oh, and hello, Ian. VK7ZD. Now. Ian, Ian, Ian was in the in the log. <laughs> I saw that call sign come up. So, uh, good evening, Ian. Um, 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 VK five ZD. I think he was Where down. Was he? Where was he? Because there was a one. There was a whole bunch of the higher frequency. VK five ZD. So home home station, uh, great score seven thousand three hundred and eleven. So so, uh, so twelve ninety six two point four three point four five point yeah. seven and ten gigs. Yeah, so you're all the way up to ten gigs. So uh, mammoth effort, Ian. Absolutely mammoth effort. Um, so uh, oh no, good stuff. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And good to uh, good to have two VK fives on. So uh, really good. So we might move to. Um, the Trans Tasman Low Band. So uh, both um, both Richard and myself uh, participated along with uh, quite a number of other people yeah. from. Uh, it had some ridiculously high numbers throughout the thing. <laughs> but I felt a bit sort of sad, but anyway. Th there were some huge yeah. numbers, like in the two hundred, late two hundreds, <laughs> and I'm sort of going, "Wow!" There okay. was some up near a hundred after the first. Like by the time I managed to get my antenna to working, because I got sick of just transmitting on the coax. Right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. And so I could hear me like, oh, good, good dummy load. Yeah. <laughs> um, and here there was people, I'm giving out like 007 and stuff, and someone's giving me back like 85. You go, wow. like, like we're an hour in, like, <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So th now, the one thing that I was, I was dealing with a lot was obviously noise on 40 and 80. I, I was dealing with a little bit of noise on 160, but uh, the, the filtering in the HPSDR was spot on, so I, that was okay. Um, uh, and I was only putting out for about 50 watts on 160 meters, so I just, yeah, okay, that could have been improved a little bit, but anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, your sort of impressions, what, what, what? Look, I've, being a Z call and, and being a uh, place microwave, I've never really been on 160 or 80 meters, except I did it for the last RD contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, and I've got one of those um, Bushcom, the three wire, Yep. and sort of, you know, we resonant, well, we, we match on every frequency. Mm. Um, it's the same as what's here, is it? I think it might be. And, 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 and yeah. in true ZBX tradition, um, I decided to test it the morning of the contest, and it was bad. <laughs> so I was like, ah, oh, right, okay. let's just try this bit of cable. Oh, yeah, that, that looks okay. Oh, actually, no. So the old undo the PL259 and pull it away from the earth and go, oh, now I can hear signals, and well, that's not good. Yeah, that's not good at all. So I was ready to actually not participate. Oh, okay. Um, because it was dark, getting dark and it was cold. And I'm like, oh, really? So let me just try this one bit of food line, ran it out, plugged it in, rang Murray, gave a test, and went, oh, I can hear some people. And that worked sort of pretty well, so I'm glad I did. But so it was the feed line that was the problem? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. A um, bit of water ingress and okay. things. But look, it, I sort of enjoyed it. It does highlight your station inadequacies. Hmm. And it also impresses upon you that there are some people that have got some very capable systems. Uh, VK4 KW jumps out at me. Uh, yeah. Um, on, like, all, on all three bands. <laughs> yeah. Um, VK4 HH was another big signal. Uh, well and truly. Um, um, VK3 MCL uh, is another one that jumped out. Of course, I had a little sort of tiny signal on. Oh, I think there's a VK7 in there somewhere. It's like, oh, really? <laughs> I do like VK7, though. They, 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 what yeah. astonished me is yeah. I've never worked into ZL on yeah. 160 before. Okay, okay. And I called, well, I think I talked to Murray, and then that ZL4 uh, RMF, RMF called me, and I'm like, was that a ZL4? Yeah. So, and there was another ZL1T. ZL. Z01T. Yeah, no, yeah. there was. There was a Z01T. And I sort of, I listened to the call sign I a few times. I'm going to T what? 
No, just tea. Yeah. So that's one of um, I assume ZL's contest stations. Like they can, like we have here, you can you can apply for a for a VK VK seven A. Okay. Or a, you know, it's that sort of thing yep. um, for for short term use. Um, but I, I think that's like one of their contesting stations. Okay. So but it was really well, look, it was sort of good fun. Sometimes it's a bit like you get a bit frustrated because you think. You know, your, your brain inversely thinks, well, I, I can hear them really well. Why can't they hear me? But then you realise that they've got really nice antennas. Um, and the stick power is probably that bigger. Correct. So I think it's more antenna. The the ZL1 RMF. I think I think it was ZL1 R ZL4 RMF. He described his antenna, and it was like 680 yeah. feet of wire. Like he must live on a farm or something on top of a hill, and he just described this, and I just it's just an in fed thing, wasn't it? In fed thing, all my, well, six hundred and eighty feet. Uh, that's more than a wavelength, so you're talking sort of every mm. stuff. Um, yeah. So, and he sort of described it, and I, I was the next one in the queue. <laughs> I just sort of, I was still getting over the, the, the antenna system. And he was only running, I think he said he was only running like under 50 watts mm. into this thing. Like most sort of the, the, the HF rigs. That uh, uh, just, that sort of but thing. just phenomenal. And, and he also had, I don't know whether he had some sort of equalisation or something on, or it was just his voice. He had quite a high voice, and it was in that that sort of, piercing part of the, the 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 frequency spectrum where you could always hear him and always make him out yeah. um, and I just sort of went yeah that you know it just highlighted for me if you get that sort of thing right mm. you can you can push through the the noise and the, the interference so so yeah but um, um, I, d I did make a few contacts on 40 metres. Um, well, uh, about three at the start. Then earlier. Wow. Yeah. Noisy. And then the 4KW, uh, the only reason I went back to 40 metres was because 4KW I worked on 160 and 80, and the guy on 80 actually messaged me because <laughs> I didn't realise who was running the station, but it was actually David VK4MZ, who was one of the directors of WIA, who I hadn't heard from for a long time and he messaged me and sort of said oh there we're also on and he gave me the three oh, frequencies yeah, Zara multi correct and so I went to 40 and thinking I haven't got a hope in hell here of hearing him on 40 at this time of the night and there they were so they must have been a, 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 you know pretty decent contesting sort of station and a, running a decent amount of power and I think Trent Sampson was behind the station, so I, he, he's a contester. So it would all be set up correctly. So uh, I think I saw a post from him saying that they they were they were trying to get the contest station back up and going. So so yeah, mm -hmm. but um, so and that was the only other forty meter contact I made. Yeah, the wood paper was real bad age. Well, can you um, have you got that recording? No, Murray didn't. Oh, Murray had oh, the recording. Hang on. Murray. Uh, because um, the interesting thing was, like, people were, were commenting about the woodpecker on 40 metres. I didn't hear it at all. So I just, I just went, okay. That was, oh, yeah. Yeah, funny about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Few complaints. Yeah, there we go. Mm. Just hold it near... Um, Across the band. Across the band. Across the band. On 80. 80. And every now and again, it would just stop, like, cold. Yeah. And you'd hear the noise floor just go... Yeah, everything come down. And yeah. you'd work a few more, and you'd go, sweet, and then it'd be back. Then it'd be back. Yeah. You'd, you'd nip up the 160 metres or everything come back, you'd go, oh, yeah. no. <coughs> no. No, no, no. Do we know which one this is? Is this, is this Russian? Because um, it used to be the Russian woodpecker yeah, on 40 metres. There's probably <laughs> lots of people that do the over horizon radar stuff now. And well, we do actually. Um, Australia does. The uh, Jinder Lee um, uh, into uh, Indonesia. <laughs> so we've, we've actually got our own. Um, so, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't. Mm, yeah, okay. Um, 
Uh, it's certainly not in our bands, but um, the, the sort of uh, array, antenna arrays... Actually, look up Jindalee, um, because they have some interesting pictures. They have curtain arrays, um, wire, wire antenna curtain arrays, so they have lots of, lots of big towers, and mm. they just have this mass of, of tuned... Strung wires. Well, and truly. Um, so um, have a look at it, because it's quite, it's quite impressive. Pros. <laughs> wow, and they're they're throwing a fair bit of power, um, yeah, more than a fair bit of pulse power out. So uh, so yeah, that's um, good fun. No, no, it's it's good. Um, now uh, you have a short period of time to send your login. You actually mm. only have a week, um, so it's coming up to the next weekend. So um, if please you put it in. please put your login. Yep. Um, it's a little bit different with this contest because what you do is send your log to, and it's a, a web address, www.vklogchecker, all one word, dot com. Um, and uh, you put it in, um, and... Um, I think VKC will show you the way. If you create the, the Cabrillo the, file and save it, da da da, yeah. da then go upload file, it'll actually go open there. a browser. And yeah, like, okay, and take you to that, yeah. that page. So, um, and it needs to be in a Cabrillo, Cabrillo format, format yep. uh, which VKCL and uh, N1MM, you can do that um, automatically. Um, so, uh, uh, so yeah, it needs to be in Cabrillo and it just gets uploaded. And they, th- th- I have no doubt they're probably starting to check things already. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, it, it goes on. That's a pretty smart little uh, website that they use. Quite a few people have submitted logs, I think, last time I looked at it. Cool. Yeah. Cool, mm-hmm. cool. Um, so, uh, so a couple of the other um, VK7 stations that I heard, uh, VK7GH, so Catherine, um, she, very she was really high score. Um, so I reckon she'll probably take out VK7, mm. I reckon. Uh, which is fantastic. Um, so, um, and it was yourself and Murray. Um, I don't think I heard too many other VKs. Uh, JGG, uh, Gary was Oh, up. Gary, Gary, of yeah. course. He had no, a cracking signal. He had a, a fantastic signal. Um, I actually must ask him what he yeah, uses I on 160. Him, I said, dude, what are you using on 160? He goes, just a piece of wire. He goes, of a, of a random length. He goes, just end fed. And, and a tuner. And I went, it works very well. He goes, seems to. Yeah. Like, it works really well. And see, he's... Where he is in Snug, he's on a hill that faces north. Oh, okay. So if that end-fed bit of wire is basically north-south... Firing off that, yeah. You, you, you would be using the terrain to your advantage. Mm. It would just be firing everything up the eastern seaboard. So... He had a colossal signal on, on, on 80 as well. Yeah. Okay. So... Uh, so anyway, it's um, the the Trans Tasman. We'll hang out for see how we uh, how we all went and uh, see how that happened, and then we'll we'll hang out for the um, VHF UHF uh, actual results that will come mm. out. Um, so uh, Talk about yeah, next the RD contest. We need to start getting everybody all here for the RD contest. Well and truly. Um, so that is the uh, the f- I was going to say the fifteenth and sixteenth of August. I'm not quite sure whether that's so right. Nice and Just bear with me. It is the fifteenth and sixteenth yeah. of um, of August, so uh, so that's the big one uh, that everybody will will pull off a all nighter <laughs> again. <laughs> again, so uh, we so need to have a bit of a crack this year, see if we can. Ah well, um, we because we 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 need to uphold the fact that mm. we've won it for the last two or three years, three mm, years. I think we have. And I think I, I think the rest of Australia now stop listening, Tim and Ian. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think the rest of Australia is starting to know, get get familiar with our technique. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but, but a, a good shout out should go to Rex because oh, Rex, definitely. Rex definitely played his part. Oh yeah, waking up at sort of every every every, every two e- hours two for the ten gig and twenty four gig contacts. Here, 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 here. <laughs> Here, so, here. So, and twelve ninety six too. So that's good. So anyway, so that's um that's the next one. So fifteenth and sixteenth uh, of of August. So uh, excellent. Mm-hmm. So um now you you're welcome to stick around. Um, we'll 
What I was going to do was uh, the latest Loki magazine. Now this is the magazine, the journal of the VKQRP club. Uh, comes out uh, every couple of months. Uh, so uh, fantastic little magazine and subscriptions from memory I think are, are ridiculous. It's like $15. Um, for a for a year, which is just yeah, fifteen dollars VK. Um, so um, uh, and great little home brewing. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ian, you, you you weren't supposed to listen to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what did you say? <laughs> oh no, lots of smiley faces. Um, <laughs> so. Um, uh, so uh, the reason I actually brought this along just to go through it was uh, they feature uh, the Entark 80 meter um, double sideband uh, transceiver uh, of April 2020 which is based on the uh, Peter Parker VK3YE design and I was just going to uh, to uh, show you bear with me bear with me bear with me um, we'll go through the the other bits and pieces here we go so uh, Nick VK seven B double E um, is um, ah, actually we're already there. So let's zoom out a little bit here. Um, so this is the uh, article out of Loki, uh, a, a simple eighty meter double sideband transmitter, a club project part two uh, by Nick VK seven B double E, and so he goes through the uh, the sources here. Um, uh, a few comments. Um, uh, about some some modifications that he he's done on the way through, uh, I, I take a note down here. Um, heat sinks are required, especially if running the uh, the IC above five volts uh, and the IRF five ten MOSFET, which is the output uh, output stage. So uh, here's the um, uh, the transmitter schematic. Now the the the, the wonderful little thing here is um, let's just. I, I love the way that they drive the IRF 510 um, with a whole lot of buffers, of, of um, TTL buffers, which are high-speed CMOS buffers, so they, they can swing the, the voltage on the output a little bit more than you can do TTL, so that's, that's why they can use them. But it's basically, here's the oscillator circuit, we're using one of those buffers, to get the thing oscillating uh, on the uh, the crystal frequency, that then feeds into a whole bucket load of these, four of these, uh, that then is feeding basically into the FET um, output stage. So uh, I, I love the way um, uh, the way uh, the way they actually do this. Um, there is a regulator uh, supplying the uh, five volts for the uh, for the drivers for the buffers, um, and then there's twelve volts which runs the uh, the FET. And then there's the low pass filter on the way out, uh, and there's also in here um, the uh, the the mic input. You, we've got a little um, LM386, which is a, a little. Uh, I think it's you can get three or three five watts, watts yeah, out of it, audio, yeah. about five watts out of it. Little um, uh, uh, audio amplifier uh, that then goes into a little bit of matching here and a little bit of level conversion, and basically directly modulates the, uh, the the frequency that's being generated into the FET. So uh, so that, that's that's a, a wonderfully simple little AM transmitter schematic. Um, the actual picture of it, here's the uh, the, the bit of uh, um, the uh, the technique of of mounting uh, little bits of PCB on top of the uh, the other PCB. Uh, to, to basically make pads that um, you can then solder to. Um, here's the uh, the LM386 amplifier, that looks like a JCAR uh, kit. <laughs> um, oscillator, uh, the buffer, the mixer, the driver, um, the little audio amplifier for the uh, the speaker, there's the heatsink on the uh, the driver trend, the driver FET, uh, changeover relay, TX relay, uh, the low pass filter and then out at the antenna socket so uh, and the TX uh, the TXRX relay the changeover relay is sitting here on this board up here so uh, the transmitter that's the transmitter prototype um, now what's next on that um, oh and, he, and then Nick goes into alternative uh, approaches adding AM to a to a CW uh, transmitter kit 
uh, talks a little bit about the double sideband, um, and then uh, a whole lot of notes. So, uh, so this is this is the kit that uh, NTARC have been uh, have been building and using on their. Uh, actually, they're probably using it tonight, right, yeah, yeah. right now. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's um, uh, that's uh, just a, a, a VK7 uh, feeling to uh, to the. Uh, to this uh, magazine. I'll just quickly go through the other articles that are in here. Uh, Trevor Quick, who's the president, uh, restored a clipsal key. So this is the standard post office clipsal key. Uh, and if you ever wondered how many bits are in there, that's how many bits there are. I've actually got quite a number of these keys. Um, wonderful Australian made keys. Um, oh, a bit of uh, more hand carried QRP antennas from uh, Peter Parker. From Andrew Davis, uh, one of the uh, the uh, VK1 Andrews. Uh, it's always the standing joke when you go um, go sotering. Uh, which Andrew are you? <laughs> um, uh, and this was about the QRP uh, contest that was held uh, in April. Um, oh, Peter Parker again. So on the air um, for the uh, the uh, the club uh, the club call sign with the club call sign VK5 WAT. Um, Andrew again, Andrew, uh, and affordable CW paddles, and he goes into a, a little bit of uh, uh, a low cost 3D printed. That's a little USB key sitting there next to a 3D printed, so it's pretty small. Um, and uh, here we go is a 3D printed uh, paddle arrangement. So I, 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 I am big paddle, one, one paddles uh, dots, one paddles uh, dars, dips and dars. Um, that's the kit, and that's all of the 3D printed bits that uh, all get put together into the uh, the paddle kit, uh, and that's uh, that's what it looks like in the end. So uh, the assembled uh, low cost paddle kit. Uh, we've got uh, Nick's um, transmitter, and uh, we have member classifieds. Obviously, that's a that features in uh, in there each night, each uh, each ed edition. And then uh, Chris VK1CT uh, always puts in the uh, the Chris crossword, which is always uh, RF related. So uh, very fascinating. Uh, club frequencies and nets uh, application for uh, for membership, and that's about it. Oh, and then uh, some of the uh, now they have the milliwatt per kilometer award. <laughs> so uh, so this was uh, th these were uh, recently uh, recently issued to. Uh, um, to George Alexov. So, uh, so yeah, that's the um, the the, the low-key magazine uh, that comes out. Well worth it for uh, fifteen dollars, and you get one of these uh, uh, sent out to you. Uh, so, uh, really, really good, uh, really, really good. Um, um, yes, yes. <laughs> now, the other magazine, the the other uh, the other magazine. We'll just go back here. Um, we f we featured the uh, the Jubis magazine. Uh, last week, uh, this is the uh, the latest, the second quarter of 2020, with the David Minchin kit, the the 122 gig kit, and Richard uh, quite rightly points out that uh, if we head to uh, the, the 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 last section is a is a round the world um, round the world wrap up of what's going on in various parts of the world, and down in the microwave Australia area is the dust <laughs> 23 centimetre QSO party in Hobart, Tasmania, Yay. Australia. Which has in the past, not to brag, actually achieved 23 on 23. Uh, has, has achieved 23 on 23, you're, yeah, you're correct. A, a couple of a couple of day, a couple of weekends running. Yeah. So, uh, and Rex has even put in here, Rex has even put in the uh, Mount Wellington here. Uh, Mount Wellington, uh, Tasmania, 1271 metres above sea level. So he goes on and talks about um, the fact that we all point at uh, Mount Wellington, hence the picture, um, and uh, then points up to Launceston for the digital contacts, uh, and uh, and quite rightly points out that on May, on the 3rd of May, 21 stations participated, very close to our goal of 23 on 23, and then the next weekend, we did achieve it, and yep. we achieved it again. Yep. So, uh, so yeah. So, so just to point out, um, for those people who don't know Jubis magazine, Jubis is a, a bilingual magazine. So, all the articles are in uh, German, are in, and in English, um, and dependent on uh, the whether the editor gets it in German, uh, the German version goes to um, has all the pictures with it. 
but if it's an English version that's that's presented, then the English version has all the pictures in it, and the German version just has references to the pictures. So that's how they how they structure the magazine. Um, so lots of wonderful advertising about some really nice um, microwave RF stuff. Yep. Um, <laughs> some expensive microwave RF stuff. Um, you can see uh, 47 gig waveguide adapter plate. So if you're playing 47, uh, 47 gigs, uh, here's how you get from the various waveguide sizes. Um, there's a whole lot of information in there and all the calculations for how you do it, um, as well as the, the modeling uh, that was done to do it. Um, and here you go. And, and then we have the, th that was an English, um, English article, and then we have the German article. Uh, which just has the the uh, the references to the uh, to the pictures that appeared uh, before. So so that's how they they handle it. Uh, we we had the twenty uh, the one twenty two gig version which we had last well, last week. So I'll whiz past that because that's that actually takes up quite a bit of the magazine. So uh, and then we go into the German version of it. Um, okay. An easy to build noise source for 76 gigs. Um, so from Philip Prince for DL2AM, um, and all of the uh, the wonderful. It, it, this is this is a wonderful, high, fairly high quality production magazine. Sure. It's really well put together. Comes out quarterly. Um, so and, and even shows here we go. My Bowley uh, watchmaker's lathe that he's he's turning all this up on. Um, so. Uh, all of the connections, the oscillators and the degenerators, uh, some very nice test equipment. And then we have it in German. Um, oh, and here he is. Here's the author, operating portable on uh, on 76 gig, using separate uh, transmit and receive dishes. So uh, interesting. Um, next article, uh, fitting HH12 or similar azimuth and elevation encoders to a speed res Azel rotator. So Speedraz uh, Azel Rotator are very nice rotators. <laughs> they are very strong. Uh, very strong and uh, uh, very tough, very tough. Uh, that's what all the professional Quite contesting stations... Quite expensive to... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> the interesting thing here is, wonderful encoder cover, ah, the, uh, the uh, soft drink bottle. <laughs> I believe Rex uses a milk container over his preamp on the and on it the fits. It yeah. almost looks professional. Yeah. It's almost. It's got a hand like almost. Like <laughs> so um, he could neither confirm nor deny if it was low fat milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course it was low fat milk. <laughs> um, um, the 2015 lunar eclipse ob observed at radio frequencies. So this is a, uh, a an article by uh, the t the head of the team that was operating DL zero SHF. Uh, and some interesting, um, some interesting results around what they were seeing uh, during the eclipse, uh, and the and the differences and the changes. Lots of analysis. Um, again, in German. And I believe zero indicates club station. So if it's DL zero, it's a club yeah. station. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, SHF. Zero, zero, so it was the, the microwave club. Yeah. Uh, He's just, that's a German point two meter. Club. I think it does the moon beacon, the tingy moon beacon. Yeah. Correct. Like it's awesome. So really, uh, so uh, that would be the German microwave club, I assume, would it? That being its DL zero SHF super. Yeah, I don't know which club, but yeah. zero is usually uh, reserved for, for clubs. clubs. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Oh, I didn't know that. That's excellent. Um, so uh, arbitrary section transmission line and wideband impedance matching ballon. <laughs> so uh, uh, by um, uh, and there's some interesting, in, in Jubus 319, I was reading an interesting article by VK2ZRH, Roger, and VK3ES, that'll be Andrew. Um, uh, uh, and I've gained some experience in the field, etc. So he goes on with uh, the what he's actually found and the, the programs he's been using to do the analysis. Um, the first ballon under test, so the, these, are, um, uh, these are printed on a PCB. So, uh, absolutely fascinating. Um, uh, in German, in German, in German. Uh, and I think that we're then up to club... Oh, no, no, sorry. 
the um, adaption of the UMTS power amplifier module for the 2400 MHz amateur band. <laughs> so uh, there's some fairly hefty uh, hefty RF devices sitting uh, sitting in there that I sus suspect are usually bolted to heat sinks. Um, so it goes into the uh, the modifications uh, in uh, in lots of detail. Um, and then, it, then it's into the club news, so it goes through each of the uh, the countries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, um, absolutely, um, uh, if you're into microwave experimentation, uh, fantastic magazine and very high quality magazine. So, uh, so uh, yeah, that's the deal. Ooh, okay, that's, that's the deal. Zero SHF. Hang on, let's go back. Ten gig antenna. <laughs> this is the. Uh, I'll just get it up on the screen. Um, this is the uh, the, the moon beacon uh, dish, and he can uh, he can go high power on that as well. I think if on request. Yeah, I think it normally runs. I think he's got a, f a f sixty watt. I think a like sixty, 60 yeah. watt. It's water cooled. Yeah, and yep. he runs. But he runs it uh, whenever the moon is above. I think maybe above five degrees. Okay. In in, in Germany, his, in his yeah, location. his location. So. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's the antenna. That's the system that we've that Rex has decoded the beacon on using that little aperture. It was only sort of four inches by five inches. Yep. So. Yeah, yeah, and we both have as well. Yeah. So, so that's uh, a fantastic. In fact, we did it out here. We did. Yeah. We we did it out here one uh, one night. So, uh, and I understand that that part of that mount at least is a um, uh, off of a tank, a German tank. Apparently it was. Yeah, but it <laughs> must be incredibly accurate. A leopard, a leopard tank. Le is they leopard tanks? No, that's Australian. Uh, whatever the anyway, whatever Some the sort of European tank. Yes, <laughs> German tank. Uh, so, um, thank you, Richard. That was that was excellent. Now, um, we've got. Um, I was uh, at my favourite shop um, today. <laughs> Given that I'm actually have some time off because we're doing Goodness, the, I'm shocked. the, <laughs> the, um, the um, <laughs> oh and um and we've got Tony VK7 VKT uh, watching. Hello Tony, uh, fantastic. Good to uh, good to have you here. Lots and lots of great comments about the uh, the club rooms renovations. Yeah, so uh, really spot on. So I, I was up at my um, my favourite shop and I I did find um <laughs> I did find another GPS for the for the van which is a Garmin GPS which I got for five dollars but that's mm -hmm. not what I'm showing tonight um, <laughs> I came across I came across um, now I Ian and, and Tim will probably know what I'm uh, what I'm about to show I came across one of these and I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw that on the box it was actually turned upside down and I turned the box over because I thought this looks like an interesting box. This is a exactly what it says on the on the um, label. It's a Western standard cell. Now what is a standard cell? It is a it is a voltage standard. So um, basically and, and if you read read what's written on it, at twenty degrees C it puts out 1.01859 volts at 20 degrees C. So it's your voltage reference that you can then calculate basically from that because you know exactly what the voltage is um, and it only varies um, based on the little chart that comes with it and I'll, I'll show the little chart in a, in a minute because the little chart is wonderful it actually has somebody's signature on it. Uh, <laughs> Um, it basically, um, the EMF of this cell has been measured and found to be within zero, plus or minus 0.01% 0 .01 of absolute voltage 1.01859 volts at 20 degrees C. So, so the test labs around the world, which are all NATO, you know, approved and all of that sort of, you know, and NIST approved and whatever else, depending on which country you're in. Um, um, have these standard cells, they have standard resistors, they have standards for almost everything. The standard cells that they usually use are this sort of thing. Now this is, this is not your super duper, super duper to 15 decimal points accurate cell, but it's still 
reasonably accurate. You could uh, calibrate your multimeter on that. Ah, well and truly. And the interesting thing is, um, I actually bought it home and I thought, I'll be amazed if this is anything near this voltage. Because when I looked at the little label, and I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you the label, this is the label that was still in the box, which is miniature standard cell. There's the, the calibration based on the temperature. So up to 40 degrees, it varies, goes from 1.01859 at 20 degrees up to 748. So it actually goes down in voltage up to 40 degrees and then down to 10 degrees, goes up a little bit. It's, it's, it's purely a voltage reference. Maximum current you can draw from it is 10 microamps for short periods, but it, you don't draw current from it. The internal resistance approximately 750 ohms at 20 degrees. There's the serial number. There's the person's signature, and it was made on the 17th of May, 1954. <laughs> and it is still putting out, on my Fluke multimeter, now I know the joke with Fluke is it's a fluke if it actually reads <laughs> right, but anyway, on my fluke multimeter, which is the my most expensive multimeter, <laughs> that's how I judge accuracy. It still reads 1.013, and I haven't got enough digits. At what temperature? Well, that that was at about 17 degrees. So, I, it's it's it appears low, but I don't know whether that's a calibrated <laughs> multimeter. So, I don't know. So, so anyway, and it, it shows you uh, the size, the mounting on the back, uh, the terminals. Oh, wow. So for something that was made in 19, and that's the, the plus and minus terminals on the top. For something, yeah. something that was made in 1954, it is still reading <laughs> almost the right voltage, and it may be reading the right voltage. I've actually asked Kim Briggs if he was coming up tonight to bring his Keithley multimeter which actually has more digits on it mm. so that we can actually try and check it 66 years old it's 66 years old it's even more than me so so i just i just could not believe my eyes now the the, the sixty four thousand dollar question is how much did i pay for it because it was it was in the expensive part of the resource tip shop oh, the collectibles <laughs> the collectible <laughs> side <laughs> So I looked at it and it, it, it said, oh, it's $30. And I went, it's $30. This is probably going to be flat. But I thought, no, I'm, I'm actually going to buy this. Because I always remember being told by my father who, who now, Ian and Tim will remember this name, Jeff Taylor, <laughs> who was VK5TY. Jeff Taylor was uh, in charge with... Um, with now what was his name Gascoigne I think Gascoigne was in charge of the the NATA accredited test lab at the Electricity Trust of South Australia and Jeff was involved in that lab um, and I always remember going into that lab dad taking me into the lab and opening up this little this little trap door in the floor and down about four meters into the ground was where the standard cells were kept mm -hmm. with thumping great leads that came out <laughs> you know low low impedance leads um, uh, because of the temperature it was mm -hmm. stable temperature mm. um, and I, it just absolutely fascinated me and they were Western standard cells now they were they were much bigger cells. This, they, they were um, like a, a standard drinking glass. They were that sort of size cell. Okay. So and what do we glass. know how they work? What's inside of them? Um, there, are, there are a specific chemical cell. Okay. So there are like a mercury something, something, something cell um, uh, that, yeah, that mm -hmm. just gives you an incredibly accurate voltage. Like a battery cell. Mm. Yeah. And... As you quite rightly put, it's over 60 years old and it's still putting out somewhere close to... Yeah. Yeah. Ian just commented, almost as old as me. Well, there you go. <laughs> but um, And, and do, do you... Uh, you guys would remember um, Jeff Taylor. I, I, I would be very surprised if you don't. Je Jeff Taylor was my old man's best 
uh, best friend. <laughs> so they used to they used to ride everywhere on motorbikes. They used to do everything, and they they actually used they they built a little tr optical transceiver because they lived uh, literally behind each other mm -hmm. in in um, Clarence Park, and they built a using a um, um, uh, a little photoelectric cell mm -hmm. <laughs> and a incandescent light globe <laughs> in a in a in a, a reflector. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they they actually built a little optical um, uh, optical. Uh, oh, there you go. And Tim's Tim's just said we kept ours in controlled temperature water bars when I worked at the calibration lab. Fantastic. No, no, we're spot on. Um, so uh, so yeah. I I anyway. That's a bit, bit of an intrigue from the my favourite shop today. So yeah, uh, fantastic. So uh, kind of and and we'll we'll see whether um, we. Um, did you notice any Reese stuff there? Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> <laughs> I went, hey, look at that! Oh no, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, okay, that was uh, yeah. All right, <laughs> I had to temper my excitement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I spotted the coin machine the other day. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I went, oh, there's this this sort of two R U looking. I uh, think, oh no, that's the thing from the Antarctic Division. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. Um, uh, but anyway, that's um, uh, that was that was a definite um, that was a definite find. So anyway, we'll um, we'll wrap it up at that. Um, uh, thank you, uh, and a huge thank you to uh, Paul VK Seven uh, FPCL, uh, who's our uh, our club room officer, who is keeping yeah. keeping everything sanitised and uh, everything between club meetings. So uh, big a big thank you to uh, to Paul. Uh, so uh, now our um, for our RF viewers, uh, we've got um, we've got <laughs> we've got a few more seven oh five videos. IC seven oh five given. Uh, I've ordered my uh, 705 and uh, I understand that the 15th of August is the date. <laughs> I understand the 15th of August is the date it appears nice. in Australia. So um, so uh, I'm looking forward to, and you'll certainly see some um, some uh, nights on 705s and yeah. whatever else. Uh, we'll GPS work out. locking and things? Yeah, <laughs> well, the GPS locking is going to be the next, uh, the next interesting... Uh, interesting episode but anyway um so we've got a few 705 and i, th I think uh, given it's quarter to nine um we that's probably going to be it so that's for our rf viewers um and these videos are literally <laughs> less than a week old so the 705s are appearing in america um and a few other and the uk and a few other places so um icom are certainly getting those those prototypes out. I think it's like review type videos. I, yeah. Well and truly. Mm. Um, the first the first one's actually from the TX Films guy, uh, Bob McCready, uh, G0FGX, uh, who runs to the TX Factor, okay. uh, that that uh, UK video, great video um, series. So he uh, he reviews introducing the 705. And then the, the next couple are um, Ham Radio Concepts. Uh, he does a review um, uh uh, basically just a, a, a summary type review and then he he actually goes what do others think making contacts in the field so he actually takes it out into the field mm -hmm. and uses it as Which a design, really. portable radio yeah. so um, so that's a ham radio context uh, concepts so uh, that's uh, they're both US um, so we've got one from the UK and two from the US so uh, so yeah have you also told the viewers about our New room. The new uh, we we did at the beginning. We we said it was. In fact, we might even need to uh, to do an outside broadcast, and we'll we'll do a bit of a a bit of a review maybe next week. Mm, um, we'll have all the stuff done by then. So yeah, yeah, and we've got um, we've got uh, assessments on Saturday. Our first lot of assessments under the uh, the new COVID uh, COVID safe mm -hmm. regime. So we've got I think we've got four or five people coming along for I. Th Three or four are foundation licensees doing the foundation course. Yeah. One of them by the name of Paul is actually mm. uh, in tonight. Oh, he is, is he? Oh, excellent. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I hope you're still there, Paul, because I'll, I'll come and say hello. Is that Paul Moss? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, no, well, that's fantastic. Um, and we've got one person who's doing their standard. So uh, so uh, we'll have the, the club rooms all spick and span for our... Uh, 
Excellent. Really the first right. examination. <laughs> um, well and truly. And also, um, the update, you may have heard um, on the broadcast on the weekend, um, NTARC, in the NTARC segment, the uh, Huonville Scout Group, who are now have six people interested in doing their foundation license and Michael VK7 MRS has been taking them through the training and has only just restarted the training um, but we've got uh, a practice uh, exam assessment in the middle I think it's the middle of August for them so we're going down to do a bit of a practice practical and a practice assessment uh, and then in September we actually have the assessment that we'll be doing down there so uh, so there'll be six, um, uh, and, and that's all leading up to Jota and Jyoti in October. Um, so uh, so they will have a, an absolute army of people running Jota and Jyoti um, for, uh, for Jota. So uh, that's fantastic. And all credit to Michael, uh, VK7 MRS, and also Dale, VK7 FNED, um, Dale Foggo, um, and... Uh, uh, and jacks and etc <laughs> etc et so um, so they are going in leaps and bounds so anyway we'll um, we'll bid uh, oh okay Andrew Elwell um, uh, however an unsaturated cell output decreases by some 80 microvolts per year so uh, very good okay Andrew thank you <laughs> I, I have to look up all of this um, because uh, I, I I did notice just then that uh, the cell you can actually take the bottom out of the cell and uh, open the cell up. Uh, so uh, I might very carefully do that and actually see what's uh, what's inside, uh, but very gingerly do that. Um, so <laughs> uh, and it's also been lying on its side, and it does quite clearly say that it actually has to be mounted vertically. Um, so, uh, but anyway, uh, thank you, Andrew. So uh, good to uh, good to uh, have you on, um, uh, and and I'll have a, a bit more of a uh, investigation and probably come back with a bit more in a later uh, later episode. So uh, anyway, we'll bid everybody seventy three. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Warren. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll head into uh, our newly renovated club rooms and have a newly renovated coffee. Oh, oh <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Seventy three will catch you uh, catch you uh, catch you next time. I should continue making some noise up here I suppose. That's all right, you can do that. Is that broadcast finished? Is that broadcast finished?